The immutable aspect of the sky and the slow, solemn motion of the clouds fading away in grey tones lightly tinged with white. Claude Debussy's description of nuage, clouds, the first movement of his Trois Nocturnes, Three Nocturnes. This is Claudio Abado's first of two recordings that he made of this music, and he was conducting the Boston Symphony Orchestra in 1970, and that was 30 years after he had first been captivated by the sounds that he was so hypnotically controlling here. When I heard my first concert in La Scala, I heard Debussy Nocturnes. Since then, I decided to play this music, to conduct this music one day, and I was seven years old. Claudio Abado was speaking before. He was a man of few, but always very directly to the point words. When I played for him as a musician, and also when I interviewed him, I felt that he was so intensely concentrated in his feelings and his thoughts that this is why he was so disarmingly reserved when he spoke. Orchestras, solo instrumentalists and solo singers knew on immediate contact with him that his concentration was born out of two elements that powerfully affected them. The deepest absorption with all the minutest details of the music that he was conducting and his magnetic powers of communicating them technically and musically. Former Boston Symphony Orchestra players, the late Harry Ellis Dixon and the late Harry Shapiro were playing on this recording of Debussy's Nocturne. About it, there's a certain fierce sincerity, a seriousness about him that frightened me a little bit. But he's a very talented, wonderful conductor. I thought he was a great conductor right from the beginning. It, he affected the orchestra in the most marvelous way because the discipline of the orchestra was fantastic and the music was wonderful. And we all hoped in the orchestra that he would become our regular conductor, perhaps sometime in the future. So we felt quite badly when he did come to Boston, Mr. Abbado. Debussy said about the second of his three nocturnes here, fit festivals. The music gives the vibrating, dancing rhythm of the atmosphere with sudden flashes of light. And in his description of Fête, Debussy went on to say, There is also the episode of the procession, a dazzling, fantastic vision, which passes through the festive scene and becomes merged in it. And to bring this off truly as Debussy wanted, and marked in his score very precisely, the magical impression, all of a sudden, of faraway trumpets in the distance that then come nearer as the procession draws closer and then arrives. 
This is very highly demanding to balance and control, really atmospherically. The sound should be very distant, far, far away, but not, it's not off stage, you know. It's not written off stage, it's on stage, but of course it has to be magic and so far away as possible. Sometimes I heard performance where they play like, you know, like a, a German, pa, pa, da, and that's wrong. Sometimes they play in an Italian style, ta -da, ba -da, ba -da, and it's wrong. So, no, I think it has to be very simple, as, as printed. Pa, 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 da, ba -da, ba -da. But the triplet, I think, is just a sign of triplet, and no, it's not slur. So, pa, 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 ba, pa, 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 pa. It was this kind of very, very special combination of artistry and virtuosity in Claudio Abado's performances when everyone was concentrating with him entirely on his wavelength that won over the London Symphony Orchestra to appoint him their principal conductor in 1979. The post that he held for eight years when Michael Davis was the orchestra's concertmaster. A man and a musician of enormous intellect and breeding. You know, it wasn't just sophisticated. It was a level of thought. It was an understanding which was of the highest possible order. And if you have that kind of mind and that acute sense of taste, and you then have the determination, the sheer dogged, cussed determination, to keep on, despite the fact we were probably working, as usual, like demented lunatics, doing everything that you could think of. Nevertheless, when we were with him under those circumstances, the demands that would be made were, I mean, 100% was just barely adequate. I mean, that was just about acceptable. The Battle on the Ice. This is from the cantata that Sergei Prokofiev arranged from the music that he'd written for Sergei Eisenstein's film Alexander Nevsky. 
and it doesn't need me to make any comment at all about the quality of results that Claudio Abado achieved here with the London Symphony Orchestra and the London Symphony Orchestra Chorus. But a comment now from percussionist Kevin Nutty is very revealing. It was like a hurricane. Very, very strange in rehearsals, I remember. Didn't say very much, he mumbled a lot. And rehearsals never seemed really to be like rehearsals. Uh, he conducted very sparingly, I think. And this brought an incredible atmosphere to a concert because this new man suddenly almost sprinted onto the stage. There was such a fire that he had and it took people by storm. It was unbelievable. Almost like whiplash the way that he'd conducted, used the stick. Beautiful, actually, a beautiful conductor, a beautiful stick technique. And I can imagine how he appealed to the audience because this dynamo, but it wasn't the dynamo of a Bernstein dynamo. It was very inside, but kind of unleashed, you know, with a, with a fury. and the din of car and taxi horns in the concrete jungle. The opening of the music for the ballet The Miraculous Mandarin by Bela Bartok. And in the greatest possible contrast, coming up next, at the other most possible extreme, is the kind of hushed poetry that Claudio Abado elicited and insisted on from the London Symphony Orchestra in Maurice Ravel's fairy tale ballet, Ma Mère Loire, Mother Goose. This is Petit Poussé, Hop o' My Thumb. Tom Thumb has lost his way in the forest as he tries to retrace his steps to get home. And as Ravel says in the score, he believed he'd easily find his way because of the bread that he'd strewn all along his path but he was very surprised to find not a single crumb. The birds had come and eaten everything. Never, never allowed the orchestra to play in quiet passages comfortably. He had rehearsed quiet passages. People were really frightened about playing quiet passages and you could tell that they were frightened. That all added to quite a 
electric atmosphere. And this inspired level of music making from Claudio Abado, here conducting the London Symphony Orchestra, was the name of the game with all the orchestras he conducted, and in whatever repertoire he took on. As you can also hear in the next of our five podcasts in which we're commemorating this supremely sensitive and brilliantly gifted artist. And in the next podcast, we're featuring him with the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra. That's in part three of Claudio Abado, A Memoir. <laughs>